Today I'm going to give you three tips for managing custom JavaScript in Webflow. The first tip is you should not target elements with class names. Right here I have a button called the disappearing button with the class button-disappear. And if we look at the custom code section here on the page, you can see I have some JavaScript code which selects the button by its class name, then adds an event listener to it, so when someone clicks it, the button will disappear. Let's take a look at this on the live site. I click the button and it goes away. But this is not a good setup, because we are targeting the element by its class name. If someone changes this class name, the JavaScript code will no longer work. And because changing class names is not uncommon in Webflow, the chances of this happening are actually very high. So here is a better approach. You just add a custom attribute to the element that you want to target with JavaScript. To do that, you click on the button to select it, go to the settings panel, and then go to the custom attributes section and create a new custom attribute. You give it a name, I usually name it mp-element because mp is my personal prefix and for the value I choose something descriptive, in this case button-disappear. And now you can go back to your custom code, let's open the custom code section and here you can target the element by its custom attribute name. First of all, remove the class as a selector and the syntax for targeting custom attributes looks like this. Square brackets and inside of them you put the attribute name, which in my case is mp-element and then equals, followed by the attribute value in quotes, in this case button-disappear. And that's it. The JavaScript code is still functional, but now it is much more robust because it is no longer tied to the class name. Tip number two for managing custom code in Webflow is do not write your JavaScript inside Webflow itself, unless it is some super small snippet like this. But in general, you should not do that, because this editor right here has two major problems. Number one, it is clunky and offers almost no features. But the even bigger problem is that whenever you make changes to this code, you have to republish your entire website so that the changes are applied. And then you wait a few seconds until it is published, check the code on the live site, see if it works, and if there's a bug, you have to do this over and over again. This is extremely inefficient. What you should do instead for a better development experience is, you should write your code outside of Webflow, and once you're finished, you paste it back into Webflow, but you don't do the development inside of here. And I'm going to show you one simple method to do this by using a program called VS Code. VS Code is a text editor optimized for programming. And you can just download it on this website called code.visualstudio.com. You click on download and then, then install it on your computer. Once you have installed and started it, you can click File, open a folder, and then open the folder of your choice on your computer. And then inside of this folder, you can create JavaScript files. So I'm going to create a new file by clicking this new file icon. Let's call it main.js and paste our JavaScript code from the Webflow project. And as you can see, this is a much better development environment right here. Because here you have features like autocomplete, you can use GitHub Copilot, the AI coding assistant, and you don't have to open the Webflow designer every time you want to make a change. It is just optimized for coding. But this is not even the best part. The best part is, by using a simple trick, we no longer have to republish our Webflow project every time we make changes to this JavaScript file. And for that, you just click on this icon right here, which is the extension icon, and then you search for an extension called Live Server. It is this one right here. Click on Install and wait a little bit. Once it has been installed, you will see this Go Live button down here. 
If this does not show up, you just close the software, you just close VS Code and restart it, and then you should see it down here. And with this live server, you can basically create a link to this JavaScript file, which you can then paste into Webflow. So let's click on go live to start the live server. Then it should automatically open up in your browser, just like this. Then click on your file. In our case, that is main.js. And then you just copy this URL from the address field. Then go back to Webflow, remove the code. So we just have these two empty script tags. And then you add a source property to the first script tag and then equals and put the URL we just copied in quotes. And now your local development setup is fully functional. To show you the magic of it, I click on save, then publish the page, go to the live site, and as you can see, the code is still working. But here is the huge difference. Now you don't have to republish your Webflow project every time you make changes to your JavaScript. So let's actually go and make a change. Inside of my code editor, I want to change the functionality so that when I click the button, it no longer disappears, but instead the background color should change to red. Let's rewrite the code. Style.backgroundcolor equals red. And now I save this file. And because the live server extension is still running, the file has automatically been updated and when I refresh the Webflow page and click the button, you can see our changes are already applied without us having to publish the page again. This alone will save you so much time and makes for a much better development experience. And once your JavaScript development is finished, you just copy this code right here and paste it back into Webflow by replacing this associated script. And that leads us to tip number three for custom code in Webflow. And that is for medium to large projects, you should use the FinSuite development starter template, which you can find here on GitHub uh, with the URL github.com slash FinSuite slash developer dash starter. See, what we just did in tip number two is great for small projects because of the simplicity. But if you want to code more than just a few simple scripts, it can become messy really quickly because it is lacking some advanced development features. And the FinSuite Developer Starter is basically a ready-made Webflow custom code template that you can use, which includes a lot of pre-built functionality. It also comes with great documentation, so you can learn exactly how to set it up right here uh, and also how you can use it together with Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to walk you through this installation process today. Instead, I just want to show you the magic and demonstrate a few features of it. So right here, I have downloaded the starter template and I have also pasted our code, which makes the button with the mp-element attribute disappear when someone clicks on it. It looks almost the same, just a little bit different because this FinSuite starter template uses TypeScript instead of JavaScript. The great thing about this starter template is that you can configure it exactly how you want it to be. So if you don't want to use TypeScript, then you can just remove it from your configurations here and change the file names from .ts to .js. Now let's look at the coolest feature this starter template comes with, and that is live reload. Once you run this project in development mode, it will automatically monitor the code for changes. And when a change occurs, it will update the JavaScript file, but it also refreshes the Webflow page where this code is running. Let's take a look at this. I have a split screen right here, the Webflow page on the left and my code on the right. And I will rewrite the code so that when someone clicks the button, the button does not disappear, but instead it rotates by 90 degrees. I remove this and write style.transform equals rotate 90 degree. And now pay very close attention. I save the file, move over to the Webflow project. I click the button, it rotates, which means the change has already been applied magically in the background. 
So this is even more efficient as now we are skipping two steps. We don't have to republish the site, but with this uh, FinSuite developer starter, we don't even have to refresh it anymore. How cool is that? I just absolutely love this. And that is just one of the really cool features built into the starter template, which will make your life a lot easier. On top of that, it also includes code formatting, a build process, you can use NPM packages, libraries, and much more. So definitely get familiar with this development starter, read the documentation on the GitHub page, and then your Webflow JavaScript development will be on a completely new level. And if you want to learn how to exactly install, use, and configure this FinSuite developer starter template, and also see how I personally work with it, then check out this next video, because that's where I show this in great detail. Have a nice day. Bye.